is a new type of bond that provides retirement security, and here to talk with me about that is Arun Muraladar from Alpha Engines. Welcome, Arun. Thanks, Bob. Nice to be here. So, Arun, before we get started, for the benefit of our listeners, viewers who may not be familiar with you and your work, do you mind giving us a brief overview? Absolutely. Uh, after getting my PhD from MIT Sloan School of Business, I came to work for the World Bank uh, Treasury, issuing bonds for them initially, and then went on to helping them manage their pension fund. And through the course of that work, we ended up doing a lot of uh, advisory work around the world on social security reform. Uh, and I ended up writing a book with the Nobel laureate Franco Modigliani on reforming social security and other systems around the world. Uh, and one of the things that concerned us back then was the move to define contribution systems away from the secure social security systems. Uh, and we forecast 20 years ago that people in DC systems in Latin America would actually end up having a rough time uh, without being able to know where they ended up. Fast forward about uh, 10 years, uh, I was approached by Kathleen Kennedy, who at that time was trying to help states cover uncovered workers uh, through state-run plans. And she convinced me to again join into this pro bono effort to help uncovered workers get a secure retirement. Uh, and along the way, uh, I ended up writing a book uh, titled 50 States of Grey, which has been kindly published by the Investments and Wealth Institute. Uh, and so I do a little bit of pro bono work on the side, but my day job is managing institutional money for typically pension funds and endowments as well. Right. And, and along the way, you've written a couple papers with uh, Nobel laureate Bob Merton around a particular type of bond. That is correct, actually. So while I was doing the work on the uncovered workers, making sure we have access and adequate instruments for them, uh, I realized that one of the challenges is while there's a lot of focus on accumulation, there isn't sufficient focus on decumulation. And more importantly, the typical person, to be quite honest, myself included, can't do the math around compounding, inflation, accumulation, decumulation. And in defined contribution systems, we're asked to you know, figure out how much to save, how to invest, and how to decumulate. And so I came up with this idea of a retirement security bond which paralleled a lot of the work uh, Professor Merton was doing to help people get more secure retirements in DC systems. And so now it's been close to six years, that, uh, seven years that we've been working together to try, try to get various countries around the world to adopt this idea of an innovative retirement security bond. Mm. So uh, maybe you could describe a bit more about how this retirement security bond works? Absolutely. Uh, so the basic idea here was just because people were moved from a defined benefit to a defined contribution, or even if somebody is just saving for themselves in a defined contribution system, we can basically assume that their goal is that they would like to continue the retirement life, the lifestyle that they had pre-retirement once they get past retirement as well. So if you define the goal in that sense, then implicitly what we're trying to say is that people would like to have a guaranteed real retirement income that starts on their date of retirement and takes them through ideally death. And that's quite different from the sort of industry approach of asking people what's your retirement number, which is a wealth number. And my 401k statements give me a wealth number, but it gives me no sense of what retirement income I'm gonna have when I'm 65. So the idea I had was, wouldn't it be neat if uh, the U.S. government, and we'll come to why the U.S. government in a second, issues a bond that pays me nothing until I hit 65, and then at age 65, it pays me $10 real per year for, let's say, 20 years. And why did we come up with that mechanism? Because in a way, that mimics the pay payments that you would get from a defined benefit or maybe even Social Security, right? So essentially, you would have no cash flows till you hit 65, during which time you're actually buying more and more of these securities. And the reason we chose $10 real per year was that if somebody said my goal is to have $50,000 real, that is in today's dollars, for my retirement to be secure and to support my lifestyle, then the only math they need to do is they've got to divide 50,000 by 10, and the goal is 5,000 bonds, right? So the only two inputs people would ever need to have a secure retirement with this instrument is what's my date of retirement and how much do I want? And this question can be answered by just about everybody in the population. Mm -hmm. So the idea was how can we come up with something that was simple, 
would be extremely low cost, would be extremely liquid, and would be extremely low risk because it was issued by the government and thereby ensure that people can actually have retirement security. Mm. And these bonds would be issued, as in the case of the U.S. government, not unlike how U.S. Treasury bonds, bills and notes and, t- and, um, and, and tips are issued. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. The beauty of it is all the infrastructure to issue this bond already exists at Treasury. Uh, we have inflation index bonds. So that's something that's very sort of simple for people to understand. And actually, you can buy I bonds as an individual through the Treasury Direct facility, which I just did a few weeks ago for this year. And my kids also did it. And they're uh, now turning 21 tomorrow and 23 in the second son's case. So the retail version of this bond could actually be issued through Treasury Direct to individuals. And the institutional version of this bond could be done through the traditional auction system so that pension funds, insurance companies, asset managers could buy a much larger instrument. But all of it priced entirely by the market. No subsidies, a pure market-based instrument where you can buy and sell them just like you would buy and sell any other treasury instrument. Right. And you mentioned real. Um, for the benefit of our viewers who may not be familiar with the terms nominal and real, what, what does that mean? Well, I think as all of us have seen in the last few years, inflation has taken a little bit of a bite out of our income, right? Uh, you go to your favorite restaurant and all of a sudden, you know, the same burger that cost $5 is now $10, right? Or your bill is now, you know, maybe 10%, 20% or 30% higher. So the difference between real and nominal is real protects the current standard of living that you have. Nominal makes sure that what you get paid is adjusted for the inflation rate that's taking place in the country at that time. Now, we had a slightly more sophisticated version of this bond as well, which was that even though you may get inflation protection, the true risk in retirement is that your standard of living could actually decrease over time. And standard of living is slightly different from inflation because standard of living could incorporate inflation. Inflation adjustment doesn't give you the change in how people's consumption patterns are changing. So if you want people to retire without a decline in standard of living, then the bond should be indexed to standard of living. But as a starting point, since we have inflation index securities, that was the easiest one to start with. Yeah. So as I think about the risk that people need to manage in retirement, one is obviously inflation, standard of living. Uh, the other is this notion of longevity and outliving your assets. And, and this bond seems to address that risk as well. Absolutely. So the way we selected that 20 years of payment streams was that the average life expectancy in America when you hit age 65 is approximately 20 years. So what's good about this instrument is, and plus typically the the poorer segments of the society as well as the minority populations have a life expectancy less than that. So for the portion of the population that's going to struggle to buy hedging instruments, in a way this bond does that implicitly, But there are a number of other innovations that would come about once this bond was issued, because one is you could buy a deferred life annuity, which would be much cheaper if you bought it today, which would start paying you after you hit age 85. Uh, The second idea we had was that if these bonds were issued, then a well-run insurance company should actually be comfortable accepting the standard retirement security bond with a fixed payment in exchange for giving you a life annuity, paying you the same amount. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if they diversify their pool enough, the experience for the insurance company is the average life expectancy, right? And they don't know whether you or I are going to be long-lived or short-lived, so the exchange should be perfectly reasonable for them. Now, one of the nice things about the retirement security bond relative to annuities is that should you die early, and I'm glad you asked this question, Your heirs inherit that bond and they can either continue to collect the coupons and the income or they can say, let's sell it and collect the principal and do whatever they want with that. So the beauty of this bond is, you know, you have the ability for your heirs to inherit it should something happen to you early in your life cycle. Yeah. So the benefit to the end user, the retail investor client uh, seems obvious. The benefit to the government? So actually, the, government, the benefit of the government is multifold, right? On the one hand, we've, we've got, I think, $9 trillion now in the defined contribution market. 
which means that if people don't make good decisions, and that's asking a lot of people to make a lot of really good decisions, uh, if those people retire poor, the government's going to have to bail them out. So improving retirement security fundamentally is the job of the government. And by having an instrument that serves as the safe asset for retirement, they're probably saving themselves a significant cost of people not retiring poor. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the nice thing about this bond is that the payment stream is very synergistic to what you need to fund uh, infrastructure projects. Uh, and the present administration and even the previous administration, so this is not a political issue, have emphasized the need for our country to have better infrastructure. So these bonds can actually be a terrific vehicle through which you fund infrastructure because you collect the monies today and then you start paying it 20, 30 years from now when these infrastructure uh, you know, investments start to come online. Um, mm. So there are a number of interesting sort of uh, abilities, uh, nice things that come out of this bond that benefit the government as well. Uh, not just the fact that, you know, it improves retirement security. Right. So speaking of governments, you have some news to share about a country that has actually started using the retirement security bond. Absolutely. You know, and uh, it's, it's amazing because Brazil on January 30th issued their version of our retirement security bond and they called it Renda Mais. And that's my bad Portuguese, but it basically stands for retirement extra. And uh, I first met them when I went to speak at a conference in 2019, November, actually three years pretty much to the day. And they immediately understood the value of such an instrument. And they said that Treasury could easily issue this instrument because they have a very de developed inflation lit market. They have a very developed Treasury direct market. And the nice thing about this bond was if it was issued, you didn't even need to have a DC plan because if you just bought it out of your savings in Treasury direct, it actually served as, as its own individual DB. And so just on the 30th, they issued this bond with a number of innovative features that we can discuss in more detail. But it shows that innovative governments with the right uh, incentives and the right sort of forward thinking approach um, can easily create this instrument at fairly short notice with very minimal sort of additional capital outlay. Mm. Uh, you mentioned the innovations, uh, eager to hear more about that. So uh, the beautiful thing about the Brazilian instrument is uh, twofold. One is they literally have you, uh, you have the ability to buy it off an app on your phone. Uh, and, you know, there's a web uh, portal as well, but you can even get this off your cell phone. Uh, the second nice thing is it has a little app that asks you these two questions, which is what is your retirement date? And then, you know, how much are you expecting to need when you get to retirement? And what sort of notion of funds do you have available today. And once you get this target number, you'll always know where you are relative to that goal. So you can always course correct in the 40 years you have from age 25 to 65 to make sure that you uh, get there effectively. So they're helping you target very nicely. Mm. But I think the most fascinating innovation to me was that you can literally buy these slices of these bonds in denominations as little as $6 at a time. So if you're somebody who's driving a taxi or if you're the gentleman who's running the company that mows my lawn, your staff members could actually start to buy secure retirement income in these little, little slivers over time, essentially putting down bricks to build a house that's going to be rock solid when they get to 65, right? And yeah. so in the old days, to get that kind of retirement security, you had to have a sufficient amount of money to buy an annuity. Essentially, the government is telling you, you can buy it in $6 slivers and we'll keep, you know, keep it ready for you when you hit retirement. Uh, so that's actually really, really terrific stuff. And, and the initial data on how well subscribed it was uh, has been quite fascinating as well. Yeah. So as you describe this, it's, there seems to be no reason why a government wouldn't want to issue this in addition to other instruments and tools that, are, that, uh, that people have available to them. Absolutely. It's purely complementary to everything else that you have today. It doesn't take away anything from an existing instrument, but it introduces the one safe asset that you have for retirement, which is currently lacking in the market. So I actually you know, have a role as an advisor to a, a large DC plan. Um, and as you look at the products, the products neither guarantee you a wealth number or a retirement income number. Mm. So I think all of us as fiduciaries for these DC pools of money have to be concerned that the existing products 
while very effective, don't give us that one thing that we absolutely need for secure retirement, which is a guaranteed retirement income number. They may give us a guaranteed asset allocation shift. They may give us other options, but there's very little by way of product that gives you a secure retirement. Making this bond available to the asset managers, to the insurance companies, will now allow them to be more creative so that you go to them and say, I'd like $50,000 in retirement. You figure out how you mix it so that when I get to 65, you know, between stocks and bonds or whatever other assets you want, make sure that I get there with the secure guarantee. Um, yeah. So it's a win for the government, it's the win for the individuals, and it's a win for the financial services industry. So th there's nothing that it detracts from and says you need to fire somebody or you need to delete this asset. It just says add this to the mix as well. Yeah, and, and it strikes me, Arun, that in a world where maybe only 50% of employees have access to a workplace retirement plan, this, in addition to maybe the state um, IRA programs, becomes yet another way for someone to uh, perhaps achieve retirement security. Absolutely. And in fact, like I said, this idea came out of some consulting work I was doing uh, to help California set up its plan for uncovered workers. Um, uh, and also, I ended up doing some work to help the people in Maryland, and I testified before the New Mexico and California boards as well. Uh, and that's when we realized that if this uncovered population is so large, rather than having to spend an enormous amount of money creating the infrastructure to not only set up a plan, but then you know have an administrator and then charge them $5 a month or maybe even less for their reports, such an instrument could be a very easy entry-level product where the costs are taken to zero because the cost deducts substantially from the retirement income that you earn. right? So if you're saving $10 a month, and the cost of the report, a paper report, is a few dollars, that's a 20% reduction in your contributions, right? So if this could have been the starter product into which people are put, especially if they're uncovered and they're very low income, this could be a nice way to help build out retirement security for that large uncovered population and typically unsophisticated financially as well, right? Yeah. So what would it take for the U.S. to um, implement this? What, where, where, do, where do we stand and what needs to be done next? Well, you know, we've been having discussions with various folks uh, in uh, various sort of uh, government offices as well. And I've also been talking to CIOs of corporate pension plans. As I said, I sit on a, a board of a public plan as well. Uh, this plan could be applied to everybody, right? So uh, the hope is that our government, much like the Brazilian government, will be willing to take that step forward and say, you know, there's no reason for us not to issue this. Uh, and, you know, it, it achieves so many goals that every government has talked about. Again, this is not a political issue at all. It's a blue and a red issue uh, because retirement security is critical. Funding infrastructure is critical. Uh, protecting people's real capacity to, to sort of function and survive with a good quality of life. And so all it takes is, you know, somebody in a, in a senior political office who looks at this and says, you know, what's the reason not to do it? Right? I think that's... That's the more interesting question. To me, the, the reason to do it is, is trivial and obvious. And when I propose it to a lot of CIOs at defined contribution plans, especially on the corporate side, they're constantly hit with lawsuits for the most trivial issues, right? Your fees are too high or your products are inadequate. This product could really be a perfect QDIA, which is the qualified defined, uh, qualified uh, Default investment alternative. Uh, default yeah. investment alternative. It's late on a Friday, so my brain is sort of <laughs> uh, melting out. Uh, and so this would actually be the true QDIA uh, because it's guaranteeing you a retirement income. And I think it would protect a lot of these institutions from frivolous lawsuits uh, because, you know, it's not going to require additional custody at, at the annuity provider or something like that. It eliminates a lot of the cost while guaranteeing a much better outcome as well. Yeah. So, Arun, we've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing? No, I think you've hit it on, on the head. You know, the nice thing about this product is it really democratizes retirement security, right? And I think what Brazil did by, you know, making it available in these thin slices of as little as, let's say, $5 at a time uh, could truly be revolutionary in a country like ours. Uh, there's no reason, given our country and the infrastructure that we have for bond issuance, uh, the education that Brazil did, they had, you know, social media campaigns. Uh, they had a book written about it. They involved people like yourself who have a following. 
uh, and targeted the young people because if the young people start saving early in life, they get the benefit of compounding, right? So Brazil has really provided a terrific model for us to adopt and adapt uh, because they truly went out and said, it's not just about issuing the bond, but it's about creating that enabling environment around it so that people can educate themselves and without having to do a lot of financial education or complex math, will actually feel secure about retiring. So I really appreciate your taking the time because you know getting the word out on channels like yours is what hopefully gets to people in positions of power in the government, but also to the, the general population because this is an issue that matters significantly to all of them as well. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So if we can prevent 50 states of gray from happening, I'll happily take it. Uh, <laughs> well, Arun, uh, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. It's a pleasure having you share your knowledge and wisdom with our viewers and listeners. So thank you. My pleasure. And if anybody wants to get involved, just let us know. This is a pro bono effort. So the more the merrier. It's taken concerned citizens in other parts of the world to get the process going. We've got a few good ones in the U.S. too but more the merrier because it helps all of us get a better retirement. So thanks again, Bob. I really appreciate it.